Hello all, welcome to Triplings. In this tutorial, we will see how to install the latest version of PostgreSQL on Windows 11 operating system without you having to require any admin rights. So without further ado, let's get started. We have to actually search for the Postgres binaries and you will be landed on the search results page which shows download PostgreSQL binaries on EDB website. So I'll go ahead and download the Win x86-64 version and the PostgreSQL database server once we end up installing the software will be 14.5. So let's go ahead and download these binaries and save. Let's wait for the download to finish. All right. So here I am on the downloads folder. So let me just open the properties and unblock them and click on apply. This needs to be actually extracted to a directory where you have full rights to extract the contents of this directory, a directory named app data roaming. So here I have chosen app data and roaming and I just go ahead and click on OK. All right. So let's navigate to that directory and we will see pgsql this is the new path that we have extracted our postgres binaries to so here we can see various contents here uh, this is a bin directory which actually uh, has the binaries that will spin up the postgres database server and it also provides us the user interface to interact with the database once the database is up and running, which is PG admin port. Uh, we'll look at it uh, once we successfully install uh, the Postgres without admin rights. So what we do is add this path to our environment variables. For that, we can just search for environment variables here and under the user environment variables for WinSell, which is this user, you have to just add a new path variable new here and paste the complete uh, location of the new pgsql installation here so once you're done if you are having any open terminals just close them and open them let's check the version or yeah sorry the command is pgsql uppercase v all right so we have successfully installed postgresql you can also do the version check postgres dash uppercase v so it will give the version of uh, postgresql that is installed so what we'll do now is we'll initialize the db directory and associate it with a username postgres by using this command so here we are doing initialization of a db under this directory with the dash d arc and dash u indicates the user who has full access to this particular database directly and W indicates that you will be prompted with the password for this particular user and E is the encryption type that the database is having which will be UTF-8 and here is the cryptographic algorithm that you are using to encrypt your password. Let's go ahead and hit enter. You will be prompted with the password for super user named Postgres. I'll go ahead and enter password and confirm it again. So once you are done, you will be seeing my data directly in your Postgres. Here is the my data directly that has just been created and you will see the respective files and folder. Okay. So the next thing is we need to start this server. So for that, all we have to do is issue a command in the terminal terminal right pg underscore ctl and the directory that where our database is lying is my data log file will be the name of the file where the logs will be uh, stored that is indicated by the argument l and finally we are going ahead starting this database uh, uh, server so hit enter voila we see that the database server started now let's connect to that database right so we have pg admin port that has been already installed so what we'll do is go to the directory bin of pg admin port you will find the app application file that says pg admin port go ahead and click on it you will be prompted with the password where this is a web application actually that uh, allows you to interface with the database server that you have just run up let's wait for this uh, web application to start it you will be prompted with uh, a port where in this application web application which is pg admin port should run if at all that particular port is already occupied, otherwise you won't be prompted please set a master password for pg admin i'll go ahead and give this password 
All right. And uh, remember that we are yet to connect to the database server that we have just created, which is my data, right? We can go ahead and clicking on add a new server and uh, it will be my data. And the connection, the host address where our database server is running is the same PC or the laptop that you have just installed on and it will become local host. And this is a default port and we haven't touched anything when we are installing. And obviously this is the same Postgres user that we have used in order to spin up this database server and whatever the password that you have given, you, ha you just have to provide it here. Let's go ahead and choose this save password option. Let's not touch anything. Hit on save. Successfully save. And you can also see the status is connected, right? So if you can just uh, refresh this, you will see the databases that were there. So let's see if at all we can just go ahead and create a database. The owner will again be uh, the Postgres, who is the user we just created. And we will see if at all there are any customizations such as encoding that needs to be set, uh, the security that we have to add in terms of privileges and security levels. Uh, if at all you want to have any parameters, PMR restriction settings, and the SQL command that is generated in order for us to create this database. Let's go ahead and say this. Yeah, so we have this Northwind database created and we do not have any tables here. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So here, let's right click here and create a table. Let's call it customer, tell you the default. I'll go ahead and define columns here, ID. ID will be an integer, so it's a primary key. And I'll just add one more column name, which is customer name, worker. Let's say it cannot be null and click on save. All right, so in order for us to stop this database server that is just spun up, the same command, instead of start, you can just go ahead and stop it. So if you want to have this restarted at any point of time, the command is restart. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a like and share it with your friends and colleagues. Please do subscribe to my channel, Tube Links. Have a great day.